Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com, and today we're going to be continuing the repair and service of Doug's Oberheim OB8. In the uh, previous video, um, we took a look at the keyboard and found that one of the oscillators was dead. Uh, we rebuilt the power supply, which is located on the control board here. And today we're going to be rebuilding the voice boards. Uh, this is a, uh, should be considered routine service. We're going to be replacing the uh, old dried up electrolytic capacitors. We're going to be changing some trimmers so that the voice boards can be calibrated well. And we're going to be changing some, uh, some other components like uh, some, some key metal film resistors as well. Overall, we're going to be changing 80 components between the two voice boards. Um, and uh, we're going to see if that resolves the issue uh, with the dead oscillator. And if not, uh, we're going we're to do a repair to that. We're going to be installing my SynthChaser.com OB8 voice board rebuild kit, which contains about 80, 80 parts and a nice checklist of uh, where they go in the keyboard. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, remove the two voice boards. Uh, and so I have the keyboard powered off and, and opened up, and I showed you how to open it up in the previous video. I still have these ribbon cables disconnected, but if you're just doing the voice boards, uh, just disconnect these two ribbon cables, one to the upper board, one to the lower board. And then there's two power connectors, again, one to the upper board, one to the lower board. Then there's a few screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that we'll remove to get the board out. With the screws removed, now we can remove the board, and we'll slip it off to the left because these uh, panning pots need to come through the holes on the right side of the case. You don't want to snap them off by trying to lift it straight up. So we've got the upper voice board removed now. To remove the lower voice board, it's, it's, it's nearly exactly the same with the addition of having just to disconnect this connector here, which is, uh, which is for the audio output. Uh, and then remove the same seven screws that we removed on the previous board. And again, slide the board to the left so you don't damage the shafts of these panning pots. And now we can set the, the rest of the keyboard aside. And one last thing I'll point out before we dive in here is the, the printed circuit boards between the upper and lower voicing board, they're the exact same PCB, but they're populated a little differently for the upper one versus the lower one. It's always easy to keep track of which is the upper, which is the lower, because the lower one has the, uh, the standoffs installed for the upper one to get onto. The lower one has some extra components, you can see in this area, there's some stuff here that isn't populated here. There's some stuff that's not populated down here that's populated here. And uh, my kit has it broken down into the upper and, and lower voicing boards. And there, there are just a couple of differences uh, that we're going to be concerned with um, when servicing these boards. And that's, that's listed on the, the parts list. So here we go. Time for the exciting desoldering montage. But I'm going to start first by clipping off the old parts, uh, the uh, axial capacitors. So I remove the capacitors from these areas on the left and right, which are common to all of the voices um, of, the, uh, of the voice board. Now I'm going to remove the components for the individual voice boards. I'm going to be removing some trimmer resistors, some uh, metal film resistors, and uh, some of these uh, capacitors.
And with that, we have the components removed from the first board. Almost. There's one hiding here that I missed. And with that, we have all the components removed from the first board, and the second board will be uh, the same process. So now I've got these 80 parts removed from the two voice boards. And uh, I never really explained why we're doing this, why I go through all this trouble to pull these boards out, remove all these parts, put them back in, do a full calibration. And, and the answer it boils down to uh, uh, performance and, and reliability. These electrolytic capacitors, um, you know, they're 35 years old and they're uh, dried up, they're past their prime. Some of the ones that I pulled out, they're even bulging a bit, which is not a good sign um, for electrolytic capacitors. Um, elsewhere on the voice board, even the parts that were, were not changing, um, the, the values do drift over time, resistors, capacitors, um, and the like. So uh, while the auto-tune does compensate for much of that, um, you get to a point where the auto-tune can't really compensate as well as it should, and then you wind up starting getting uh, voices failing auto-tune or voices being inconsistent from voice to voice uh, even after the auto-tune. Uh, so what we're doing is we're changing all the capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors. We're changing the uh, volts per octave trimmer, which is going to allow us to get a very precise calibration because we're going to put multi-turn trimmers in the place of single-turn trimmers. Uh, these single-turn trimmers that we pulled out, you so much as breathe on them and you've overshot what you're trying to, to calibrate. So uh, we're replacing them with multi-turn trimmers. And we're also replacing some key metal film resistors with some uh, high precision, uh, low temperature coefficient uh, upgraded resistors, which will improve oscillator stability and, uh, and tuning. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup to the board before we uh, put the new components on. There's a lot of flux residue around the, uh, s some of the components, particularly the trimmers that I took off. So we're gonna clean that up and, uh, and be ready to install the new stuff. So now everything that's come out needs to go back in, except we're putting new things in, in their place, of course. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the components first. I'm going to go ahead and solder the capacitors in now and I'll come back for the trimmers and the resistors later. The next thing to go in will be the resistors, and I'm going to use a lead forming tool here uh, to bend the leads so everything is nice and clean when it goes in. So with the resistors in, the final thing that we have to do is put the trimmers in. And we're upgrading these trimmers from single, single turn trimmers to a more precise multi-turn trimmer. However, that requires some kludging of the, of the part to retrofit it into place. So what we have is we have a uh, multi-turn trimmer here with three, uh, three legs that we need to bend in order to get it to fit in this in the footprint for the old trimmer. So what we're going to do is we're going to, with some tweezers, make sure you can see this, I'm going to bend 
one of the legs forward. And the other two legs back. I'll straighten these out. It's hard to do with the camera there. Uh, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bend this just slightly over at the edge. And I'm going to do that to all three of the leads. So we kind of get something that looks like, like this. And then what we can do is we can stick that into the footprint of the old one. So just set it in there. And uh, the leads might not be long enough to fit through the board. So what we're going to do is we are going to solder this from the component side of the board. So very carefully. See if I can do this with the uh, camera the way it is. Very carefully slip that soldering iron in there and solder it into place. And I'll do the same for these other two leads, which are a little easier to get to. It's done. So when you bend the other ones, bend them the same way that you bent the the, uh, the existing ones. So the little adjustment screw will be in the same orientation. So you don't want the adjustment screw to be in the lower right here when it's on the upper left of one. That way you have a consistent clockwise, counterclockwise adjustment scheme between all your voices. So I'm going to uh, solder another one of these into place just to show you how we can carefully get in there and do it. So the uh, adjustment screw is in the same orientation as the other one. And uh, this one I'm going to have to have to block the camera a little to get this one back here. And now I'll get the, the two easier ones up here in the front. It's kind of a hassle, uh, but it is totally worth it in the, uh, the precision of the calibration that you're going to be able to achieve with these. It's definitely worth taking the extra time to retrofit these into place and, uh, and to make this upgrade. To your voice boards. And with the rest of those trimmers in, we've now completed the lower voice board. Um, with regard to the trimmers, if, if this kind of soldering is, is too tricky um, or uh, you don't have a soldering iron with a fine enough tip or, or whatever, you don't have to install the trimmers. Conversely, if you want to upgrade all your other trimmers to the multi turn, I have a separate kit. Uh, I call it the, the OB8 voice card, voice board ultimate service kit, which includes everything that we just did here, plus multi-turn trimmers to replace all the rest of them. Sometimes there's uh, stuff glued on the trimmers, um, you know, the trimmers are glued into place, and, and then when you go to calibrate, stuff gets in the, in the trimmers and ruins them, or you're, you're unable to free the wiper, uh, so having the extra trimmers on hand could be, could be valuable. Uh, but for, for this service, we're just replacing the volts per octave trimmers uh, for each of the voices with the multi-turn. And now I'm going to repeat the same process, install the new components on the upper voice board. I repeated the process here with the upper voice board, and now both boards are finished and ready to go back into the synthesizer. In the next video, I'll be putting these boards back into the keyboard and showing you how to calibrate the Oberheim OB8. This is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please post in the comments. And be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.